foreman of the work crew in charge of the excavation. I was right here because we had found a uh, ship, and the likes of which didn't exist anywhere in the world. Tuhami was among the first men to enter the vault in nearly 50 centuries. But instead of the pharaoh's mummy, they found a completely disassembled ship, 1,224 pieces of polished cedar, arranged in the words of one observer, like parts of a toy model. It took 13 years of painstaking labor to put the boat back together. The old shipbuilding techniques, like hand tying planks to the rails, were scrupulously followed. Naval historians say the boat is an engineering feat in wood, as impressive in its own way as the pyramids are in stone. But even as the vessel took shape, experts disagreed about how it had originally been used. Some said it was simply a funeral barge. Others believed it was a ship for the pharaoh in his afterlife. Hieroglyphs from the nearby pyramid of Unas suggest that a pharaoh was expected to sail two boats, one during the day and one at night, as he followed the sun throughout eternity. Other reliefs, like these on the walls of the tomb of T, provide documentary evidence of the importance of boat traffic on the River Nile, but shed little further light on the debate, except to show us how the ancient boats were made. But whatever its use, the 142-foot vessel must have made quite an impression then as it does today. It is the oldest ship in the world. Housed in its own museum, Khufu's boat attracts some 200,000 visitors a year. The anchor, the anchor, and the big one, the girl to push it away from the bank. Mm -hmm. But this is a small cabin for the captain, and this uh, the big cabin for the mummy of Kiyok. This is all cedar, cedar wood. 34 years later, scientists are preparing to examine the contents of a second underground chamber, discovered a stone's throw away from the first. But this time, there are no plans to excavate it. Dr. L. Baz, director of Boston University's Center for Remote Sensing, and a team of scientists sponsored by the National Geographic Society begin the operation with ground-penetrating radar, which has provided a rough map of shapes below the surface. This space-age approach is helping to solve one of archaeology's thorniest problems, how to explore a site without destroying it. The only digging involved will be scraping away a few feet of loose earth from one of the enormous capstones covering the pit. The archaeology is no longer a uh, grave, uh, grave uh, robbing uh, activity or uh, a uh, destruction, a way of destroying things until you get the artifact. It's not because the, the site itself might be an artifact to keep it intact the way the ancients had left it. So this is really getting a, 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 a way of departing from the, uh, the archaeology the way it was. And we are just opening a whole new way that might apply in, in many other fields. The key to the plan is drilling a small hole through the six-foot thick capstone into the vault. But it must be an airtight hole. When the first chamber was opened in 1954, the air inside was still heavy with the smell of cedar. 
So there is a chance the air in this vault has been trapped there for over 46 centuries, an invaluable scientific find. Bob Moores of Black & Decker developed a sophisticated airlock that will make sure new and old air don't mingle. Anchored to the rock is a system of O-rings and backup seals. The drill will move through the limestone at the rate of about four inches an hour, with frequent pauses to remove dust and debris. Moore's unique design then allows the hole to be closed while other instruments are inserted. Inside the vault, air samples will be collected and tested for traces of modern air pollutants. If none are found, it might explain why the first ship was so well preserved. Peter Tons of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration will supervise the sampling procedures. The boat in the adjacent pit to this one <coughs> uh, was extremely well preserved for 4,600 years. And from what I've heard, it has deteriorated more in the past 20 years than in the previous 4,600. So the Egyptians are not very keen on opening this pit and getting the boat out, or if there's a boat in there, with, and then have it crumble. So they would uh, like to see what's in there, what it's like in there, and then seal the hole back up. That would like to this up. The drilling operation consumes one full day, and another. Then, midway through the third day, Bob Moore's drill moves through the last few millimeters of stone. Now it is time for the rest of the team to go to work. Peter Tons will draw about 70 liters of air from the vault. Are you going to take any samples for the... Yeah. Since the results of the analysis won't be available for months, Tons decides to perform a less scientific examination on the spot. It smells stale. It smells stale. No, definitely doesn't smell, does not smell like cedar. It is nearly midnight before the photographers get their turn. The long black tube is part of a special video system designed by Pete Patron of National Geographic. What is, what is monitoring look like, anybody? In order not to affect the temperature inside the vault, a heatless lamp will provide the light. <laughs> As the camera begins its slow descent through the hole, Everyone gathers around a TV monitor to catch a first glimpse of things that haven't been seen for nearly 5,000 years. An eerie shower of drilling dust signals the camera's entrance into the space which has waited so long in darkness. Right. Doesn't, doesn't 
It does look like pieces have flaked off the, maybe the sealer. Gypsum sealer? Oh, yeah. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Tuhami has no doubt that he is looking at the pieces of a second ship. The camera shows a notched beam that supported the deckhouse roof, a valuable clue to the length of the ship. Other angles reveal a copper fitting, a stonemason's ancient calculations. Experts believe each piece is part of a ship very much like the first, though perhaps a bit smaller. The obvious damage inside the vault may be due to a brick-making machine used to build the museum for the first ship. It stood directly above this second chamber, vibrating and dripping water. Other details seem to confirm this hypothesis wet-looking patches in the roof where plaster has fallen. A pair of ghostly boar blades, warped by moisture. No, drop down. And then, something unexpected. Well, Peter, quick, tell us here. Uh -huh. Four-thousand-year-old yeah. <laughs> 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 Hey! 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 Five thousand years ago. <laughs> 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 <laughs>